we saw some incredible performance from our 2008 high-end gaming PC, going so far that we played some modern games on it at a decent frame rate. We highly recommend checking out that video before watching this one, as we will reference parts and topics we discussed in that video. So we saw an early i7 performance, but what about AMD Phantom? How capable was Phantom in 2008? While we are going to use some of the parts we already used in our Intel variant, the motherboard is not one of them and we need an AMD motherboard and AM2 socket for our Phantom. And that motherboard is none other than Asus Crosshair 2 formula from Asus's venerated ROG lineup. Built with Nvidia's Enforce 780A chipset, where A stands for AMD as opposed to I in 780i for Intel which was on par with or beating AMD Zone 790FX top-of-the-line chipset, albeit at a much higher power usage. This motherboard is built for SLI and doesn't support Crossfire, so we'll stick with more powerful NVIDIA cards with this one. The motherboard has three PCIe X16 slots, but one of them, the white one, is limited to X8 speed. This is the same setup we had on Rampage 2 Extreme, but white and blue slots traded places here, which will come into play later. The motherboard is praised for its stability, and it lives up to its praise. Our CPU is, surprise surprise, an AMD Phantom, X4-9950 Black Edition to be exact. It's a 4-core, four 4-thread four part, clocked at 2.2 GHz. It was the best CPU in the AMD lineup in 2008. Priced much lower than early i7s, it was never meant to contest them. It was meant to compete with Core 2 quads such as Q6600 and Q9300, and AMD certainly had a success there. We will compare its performance to the i7-960, which we used as an i7-965 stand-in in our 2008 high-end. But please, be aware that these are not even closely in the same category. We only do so as they are the strongest offering from their respective companies. We'll reuse our Cooler Master H411R, which has an easy mount clip for the AM2 socket. While it has a smaller 92mm fan, it has good thermal performance and can keep this CPU pretty cool. When comparing Rampage and Crosshair boards, at first glance you'll notice that Crosshair doesn't have an extra 2 RAM slots for triple channel. At second glance, you'll notice that those are not the same slots, as Crosshair uses DDR2 memory. And for DDR2 we went with 4 of the best OCZ Platinum 2GB 1066 MHz memory. One of the sticks is not like the others as it has 555 timings and others are at 566. But they are ok compatibility wise and work flawlessly to build a total of 8GB of RAM. As for our graphics cards we are sticking with Nvidia GeForce GTX 280 as it's the best of the bunch. We've seen some good SLI performance from these cards, and we hope to do the same here as well. We've noticed GeForce GTX 295 being name dropped, but this dual GPU monstrosity was released later in 2009. Be sure though that these cards will not sit idly in the upcoming months. Once again we'll also utilize our AMD Radeon HD 4870, but only a singular card this time. As it's already mentioned, our Enforce chipset doesn't support Crossfire by default. There seem to be some ways by which it can be done, but it goes way beyond regular users' knowledge and stable behavior. For storage, we once again went with Velociraptor VD1500HLFS, a 150GB hard drive from Western Digital. This peculiar weirdly built dinosaur is one of the, if not the most reliable HDD in our collection. We've built this machine on multiple occasions, as testing took quite some time, similar to our Intel variant. In those occurrences, we built it using two different PSUs, 1000W LC Power LC1000M and 650W Seasonic Core GC650. The same goes for our makeshift test benches, as you might notice two different prototypes in our footage. This is the complete list of parts that we used in this project. Let's build this PC now. We forgot to record adding memory to the mainboard step, that's why it just magically appears.
You might remember that two blue PCI Express X16 slots were separated. That was a great idea from the cooling standpoint, as the two cards were further from each other. However, the problem we encountered is that we do not possess an SLI bridge long enough for this gap. So in the end we'll have to use one X16 and one X8 PCI Express slot. This compromise didn't impede much on our machine's performance, as GTX 280 doesn't need that much bandwidth. and our PC is ready. All of the memory is registered correctly, as is our hard drive. As we mentioned, we'll also run tests with Radeon HD 4870, and we'll include the results. Time to set up software and run some benchmarks. As expected, Phantom performance is much weaker than the i7 in all of the benchmarks. The platform itself is pushing GPUs to the max, so we avoided bottleneck on that point. Either way, performance is at least satisfactory in all games. The CPU performance problem is more prominent with the GPU upgrade, but Phantom still holds up. Up until we couldn't run Horizon Zero Dawn and Cyberpunk 2077 because of the lack of required CPU instructions. Considering that our AMD variant with HD 4870 is around the same price as our 2008 mid-range build, it makes sense to compare these two. They are alternating for better performance from game to game. We also display the results for GTX 280 variants, which makes Mafia 2's bias towards Nvidia cards quite obvious. As always we ran some synthetic benchmarks. Here you can observe the results. That concludes our 2008 journey. The final conclusion we can draw is that it was a bit hard to mess up building a PC in 2008. Whether you went with Ultimate High-End, Mid-Range, Intel or AMD, Nvidia or AMD ATI. Of course, there were some bad parts you could buy back then, but at least they were decently priced. 
It was a fun journey indeed. Hope you had some fun with it as well. See you around.